After leaving the main star system, this mothership spent 40 years travelling to Kerbal, the original home of the Kerbals. On its way, it encountered a lot of empty space, which is funny because the skull of the guy who organised this mission also contains a lot of empty space. That's right, I forgot to bring a rover with me. After arriving around Janus, formerly known as Duel, the mothership will stay there while it refuels and explores the nearby moons. Using ore mined from them, the mothership will act as an orbital shipyard capable of constructing small vessels until a more capable ship arrives. We are here with the station around Janus. But other than that, we've arrived in one piece as well. So what we're going to be doing in this episode is we're going to be showing each one of these ships doing its own thing. Two of them are going to go to a planet called Lond, and it's this one here. It's a very rocky moon. I'm probably going to land on the other side because the terrain is more interesting there, but that's where we're going to be refueling. And then we're going to come back up and we're going to dock with the station. So we're going to do a little bit of science at the same time. However, I don't have a rover or anything like that. I'm going to explain how I'm going to use the station as an orbital ship. Yard. So what I'm going to do is I have these ore tanks here and I think the way I'm going to go about it is I'm going to do half of the total mass of ore is the maximum mass of a ship that I can launch. So for example, if I had 40 tons of ore inside the space station, I could launch a 20 ton ship. I think that seems fair, you know, because you'd lose half of it refining it into usable materials. And it's like originally I planned to use extra planetary launch pads, but because they don't work quite how I want, I just thought, you know what, it's easy to just do that and just use hyper edit and slap it next to the station and be like, hey, hey, we built something. I feel like that's probably a better way to go about it. So that's what I'm going to do. But we're not going to build anything yet because we don't have any ore. I think the first thing that I will build will be a rover of some sort. But without further ado, it's time to go down to the surface of Lon. Let's retract the solar panels because it's inside another part and that's probably going to destroy them as soon as I undock. All right. Is it looking clear? Oh, just about. I also have some radiators on the space station somewhere, but they are covered by the other ships, which is a bit of a design flaw of mine. So Unfortunately, if I do end up getting close to anything that is warm, I can't protect the station. It's time to put RTS on and undock from the station. We have a pilot, so that's all we need, and let's go. That view of all of the planets just orbiting Janus like that is really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. All right, and the engines are on and we're away. The first time I've had 60 FPS in quite a while because I've been <laughs> I've spent most of the day getting the station hit. There we go. That's a fairly good encounter. All right, so the maneuver to slow us down is going to cost us barely anything. So it's probably better to overestimate how much fuel I'm going to need rather than underestimate. So luckily, we've not messed up quite so early into the <laughs> into the mission. So I'm tempted to land near these mountains somewhere, I reckon. Somewhere where you've got a nice contrast between the mountains and the flats. I don't want to just land on the flats, you know. I want a challenge. If there's more resources in a specific biome, it's probably better to land where there are multiple. A very, very rocky world. Not many features to it. Very bleak, if there's one word to describe it. Very bleak. All right, we're coming up to the landing site. I'm going to start slowing down now, except I want my engines. <laughs> Never mind. I also have this engine here, but I'm going to use the oxidizer that I have, probably for using the VTOL engines, you know. I don't really need the extra thrust. Just going over the top of this mountain because I misjudged how not flat that looks. <laughs> that looks awful. I'm going to go for this blue area down here, and the cliffs here look like they're made out of some sort of ash. I'm going to move my engine so that they point forward so that I can slow down, because I don't want to be skidding across the surface at like 500 meters per second. <laughs> at least I'm not landing on the mountains. I'm actually really happy with how th this VTOL works. I'm just hoping it lands. If it doesn't land, I'm not going to be very happy with it, obviously, but <laughs> you know, so far it's looking all right. Here we go. We're approaching the ground, and we're going to do our first landing in the Kerbal system, and here we go. There we go, fantastic. Now then, it's time to start mining. The drills have been deployed. Solar panels deployed. And there we go. It's time to start mining. All right, we're back at the station. And this time I need to actually fully fuel this one because this one is going a lot further. All right, so my screen looks absolutely fantastic right now. <laughs> Oh no. It's pretty much fueled. I don't think it's perfect, but it's almost there. It should be enough for what we want to do. 7,600 meters per second is more than enough, I'm pretty sure. At least I think. All right, so it's actually 6,600 if we factor in the other engines. If we had one engine on, it would be 7,600, which is quite a substantial reduction, but we should be okay. Now, you might be asking, where am I going? Links, where are you off to? Well, the answer is I am off to Tribute, which you might know as Kerbin. So uh, I'm not going to reveal anything for those of you who haven't played the mod 
mod. I'm going to wait until we actually get there for you guys to find out what it's like. But that is where the Explorer is going. We're going to land on Tribute, Kerbin. It's going to be odd. It's going to be very strange revisiting our old friend. But that is what the ship was designed to do. And it has certainly got the capability to do it. All right. This is the most long range ship that I've ever built. This ship can go further than anything else that I've made. So I am very, very excited that it's actually in one piece and that it arrived here. It's also going to go on one of the longer missions, one of the longest missions it can go on. Uh, now, luckily, it will be able to land on Tribute, hopefully. Let's just take a look. Focus view. Tribute has a uh, at sea level gravity of 0.06, which is good enough for this. So it's time to leave the general system and go on a bit of an adventure. And the burn has begun. The explorer has left the station. It's on its way to Tribute. And you might be wondering, how long is it going to take to get there? And my answer is, oh, six years, of course. <laughs> Almost seven years it's going to take. But it's going to be fine. You know, they've got plenty of snacks. They've got each other's company. It's going to be great. And they have a massive ship to go around in. I mean, this is huge. <laughs> but that is a nice sight to see. I thought I'd park the station around Janus, basically because the views, of course, but also the fact that it's easy for refueling. I could have put it around Tribute. Tribute's got a much lower gravity than Lond. It's probably easier to refuel from, but it's very close to Kerbal, and that makes going anywhere else a nightmare. It's going to cost an awful lot of fuel to go anywhere else. So I thought, you know what, we'll put it around Janus, which means we've got Verna and we've got the inner system, which is fairly easy to get out to using the gravity assist from Janus. And you can you can go anywhere, pretty much. We've got a lot of places to explore. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. We've got a lot of places to explore. So our encounter is looking pretty air. So that's something I'm going to have to fix. <laughs> that's going to cost us a lot to slow down if we do it there. You can just about see Kerbal down there. Now, I am going to be increasing its size in a future update to the planet pack because I did an update where I decreased its size and I realized, huh, you can't see it at all now. So I'm going to increase it again as unrealistic as it might be, but it should make for some more pretty views because at the moment you can't really distinguish that from this one or that one over there. All right, I fixed my encounter with Tribute and it's time to do the maneuver that will capture us. Now I've left it purposely like this instead of a circle because there are some good views that I want to show off. Now I'm, I'm still purposely keeping the planet out of view until I actually get there. Just, you know, to keep it in suspense a little bit. And here we are. This is Kerbin, or at least what's left of it after the sun exploded. It's got some very nice rings, very beautiful rings, and it has this massive fuck off crater on the middle. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be landing here because that's what the Beyond Home Planet Pack is all about. It's about not only the future of the Kerbals, but it's also about the past and what happened before they reached their new system, which is just over there, actually, just around the corner. All right, so the landing spot that I want is around here. Now, that's going to be quite challenging, I know, and uh, I'm not confident that I'm going to be able to do it, but we're going to give it a try. You know, the worst case scenario is that we land in the lava. I mean, <laughs> I don't even have any radiators on this thing. This thing will just die as soon as it touches it. I also get a lot of comments saying that, oh, why can't you just, like, put loads and loads of radiators on your craft and that stops it from dying in lava? It's like, mate, it's lava. It's touching your craft. No amount of radiators can save it. <laughs> it's like, who will win? The force of Kerbin's core or a thin metal sheet? <laughs> Which is it going to be? <laughs> like, no amount of radiators is going to keep you from that. Well, at least our orbit lines up with where we roughly want to land and we can do a tiny bit of adjustments. I mean, look how slow we're traveling. A nice little detail that I added to Tribute in one of the updates was some lava flows. Now, if you look just here, you can see where lava has flowed before and it's flowed back down into this big crater all the way from near the poles, actually. It's gone all the way down here into the crater. And that's a, a nice little feature that I enjoyed adding. I could land there. However, for some reason, these are the, going the wrong way. I don't know why. We're going to land in this mountainous area, assuming it actually is very mountainous. It's either, see, with Tribute, it's either they're very tall or they're not as tall as they look. There's never like a sweet spot in the middle. So I asked my Discord whether they wanted me to land near lava or in the mountains, and the response that I got was in the mountains. However, little did they know that there was lava next to the mountains. So that's exactly where I went. All right, we're lined up pretty well with our landing spot. Ah, fantastic. You know, I, I was like, you know, it's one or the other. It's really tall or really small, and it, it's really tall. Oh, brilliant. And there's the lava down there. Oh, all right. So uh, whilst we're falling to our doom, I think it's time to, to do some science. It's not quite the same if you don't do science whilst plummeting to your death. Let's open these bad boys. Let's get some science going, lads. All right, 175, 70, 140. Very nice. 56 from the temperature scan. I don't think I can do that yet. No. From the pressure scan, 84. Very nice. Can do an EVA report. Why don't we do that? Oh, Jeb, get out there. Do it. EVA report. I think that's all I can do. Let's board. And I think that's everything. Let's collect all of that. Brilliant. Now to focus on the task at hand is landing on this fucking thing. No, we can't do this 
this without a risk. That looks fairly flat, doesn't it? Actually, there might be a slightly better spot over here, which kind of lines up a little better with our orbit. I think I'm going to go for that place instead, this bit here. It's still pretty risky. You know, it's still pretty risky. It's the pitch black terrain, charred from thousands and thousands of years. All right, let's get these engines on. I don't know how you activate them. I think I just have to do it myself. So, uh, let, let, oh, I didn't mean to press, I <laughs> didn't mean to full throttle there. All right, anyway, let's go. It's looking all right so far. I've got to go forwards a little bit now, otherwise I really am going to be landing on this little spike down there. Well, you can see the temper system from here. Oh, fantastic. How nice. I don't know what the action group is. I've completely forgotten, which means if I want to do anything quickly, I have to do it incredibly slowly. Let's turn all of these on then. Now, all we got to do is go past these mountains and the black and grey terrain. We're going to be on the very edge of certain death, certain doom. Stars are about to be obscured. This is actually a pretty nice view, to be honest. Looking at that, if the stars were still visible, that's pretty nice. We're pretty much just in free fall now. I really hope that's higher than the altitude that we burn up at from the lava. You can see it's moving very slowly down there. Ooh. Oh, Kerbin, what has happened to you? What's, what's going on? Feeling a, a little bit warm, you know, a bit angry. All right, um, we're getting a lot closer. We can, we can see rocks on the floor now. I reckon it's time to start slowing this down. We can see some very nice rocks. I don't know how flat that is. Uh, it looks okay-ish, kind of. It looks fine for what we're going to be doing. Definitely very remi reminiscent of Star Trek Into Darkness. Reminds me a lot of that. Very nice. Not gonna lie, slightly nervous about what's going to happen to our craft over here. We're falling at a very leisurely five meters per second. All right, we're going to be right on the edge of this cliff, by the way. That is a cliff. And here we go with plenty of oxidizer to spare, which I probably have way too much of. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump all of the oxidizer for my journey back to the station just to give me a little bit more fuel. But well, here we go. We're about to land on Tribute, which was once Kerbin. And... There we are. We've landed near some scatters that we can nicely explore. In relation to the rest of the planet, this is where we've landed. We've landed right here, right on the edge of the lava, which I am absolutely not going down to, by the way. Because yes, if you land in it, it will kill you. It's time to do some science, don't you think? And we're going to go EVA on a very fiery planet full of uh, full of death. Yeah, all, it's just death, really, isn't it? I don't see anything living on here except uh, Liebe Kerman's sorry ass. Right, first things first is I need to restore the science experiments. Now, luckily, when I built this thing, I had it in mind for the Kerbals to be able to travel under it, which I then realised on high-G planets, when the landing gear is compressed even more, I won't be able to get my head under it. So, <laughs> you know. Let's do that. Restore. And that one. The Science Junior. Restore. Don't mind me just hitting my head on the vital scientific components. And here we are, landed at Tribute. Now, for those of you who are new, what I do is I plant a flag. I use names from subscribers. So we're going to see who was subscribed last. So my last public subscription was from this guy called Spicy Memes For Your Kids, which is a <laughs> fantastic name. <laughs> fantastic. You should definitely subscribe if you want a name on your flag. Uh, the, the chances are very slim that you'll actually get onto a flag. Hold on, I need to do a surface sample. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to do an EVA report as well. 60 science and a lot for the surface. 225 science for the surface sample. Now then, I need to go sample these scatters over here. These good old surface features. Hopefully some lore will be revealed as well. I'm not sure if this works in 1.9 yet though. I've not tried it in 1.9, which is the version that I'm on currently. So, uh, wish me luck. And as I suspected, it doesn't work in 1.9. It really doesn't. So, um, there will be no sampling this yet. So I'm going to leave the Explorer here. I'm going to wait until that works, and then I'll sample it when I get back. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. If you did enjoy that, please do consider liking and subscribing, because these episodes take a lot of effort to make, especially the planet pack, I mean. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.